Welcome back to Slow Living, I'm Esther and in today's video I will show you how I mended a douche bag that I found at the thrift store. Technically my husband Tim found it because he's all over thrifting, loves it and always picks out these really good bargains. So if you're not familiar with douche bags, um, yes controversial name, um, but they are a bag company founded by Yoon Olsen, a pretty famous YouTuber so if you're on here I assume that you may know who he is. Um, he's a, I think he's from Sweden? Sweden? Sweden. Yeah, I think they're Swedish. Um, him and his wife Yanni, their douchebags have been known to be a very versatile and hard wearing travel bag sort of type thing. Type thing. They have these really cool sort of hookup, like hookup systems, where <laughs> these little hooks attached to the bag where you can clip each bag onto like your other luggage bags. And so then instead of hauling around like five bags, like I usually do when I'm going through an airport, you can actually hook them onto each other. These are known for being well designed for all their um, pockets and all the little things that you might need while you're traveling. So this particular one has this top area for like easy access stuff. It's also got like little zip here where you can put smaller things. I think this one's great because it's got a laptop sleeve side and it's padded so that's quite nice. The straps are quite nicely padded as well. These are the hook things I was telling you about so you can adjust them. You're supposed to hook those onto other luggage so I don't know if the luggage sits here and you hook it onto there. Great visual I know. <laughs> It also has some really good inside um, pockets. So as you can see here, there's like this net on both sides of the bag, which is actually really quite useful. Waterproof outers, so durable, hard wearing, really good for day trips and sort of like throwing around. And it's got this padding on the back as well, which is meant to be quite comfortable. So yeah, it's a really, really good find. In great condition, um, we bought it for I think 12 or 14 Australian dollars from the Salvos thrift store um, really close to our house and we knew straight away that we would be able to fix this. It was not as easy as I thought it was going to be so I will take you along that journey. Let's go! This is the bag as we found it. The part that has sort of torn away, which you will see here, is the part that separates that top section from the bottom section. So it's just frayed and totally torn away from the bag. This is the only part of the bag that's been damaged, so it's going to be a relatively easy fix. There's that inner like rectangle piece and then there's the binding that goes around that. We are simply just going to unpick it. So that line of stitching there and it goes all the way around the outside. We're just gonna unpick with an unpicker. Okay, like most things, this is taking longer than I expected. <laughs> you have to be careful because you really don't want to rip off more than you have to. We wanna try and preserve as much of the bag's integrity as possible while we're doing this. Otherwise, it's just gonna make it a whole lot more difficult to put everything back in place. We also want to keep this, it really depends on the garment or the item that you're mending, but for me, I really want to preserve this bit of tape. I don't want to damage it or pull any of the fibers away because I'm going to use that same bit of tape to put back into the bag once I replace that ripped piece. So uh, yeah, here I go. This is probably going to take another like 15 minutes. Fun times. <laughs> Patience is key. Ooh, okay, I finally got off the last bit of that. So as you can see, I have managed to get off this piece of tape. I'm going to take off all these little bits of thread that I've broken, clean it up a bit so that I can reuse it when I reattach everything back together. Ta -da! Wonderful. I'm going to pop that aside. Do not want to lose that. And now I will show you what's on the inside of the bag. So here we go. Like I said, got to clean all these little bits up, but now we can see, oh, the tripod is caught on my top. This is the bit that came away from this seam. Remember that this rectangular, rectangular, <laughs> I was gonna say rectangular, rectangular piece 
is what I'm going to be replacing. And you can see that it is even unpicking after unpicking this, it's actually still attached because it was sewn in before the tape. So what I have to do now is unpick that line of stitching again all the way around so that it comes off nice and clean. Hopefully that doesn't take another million years, but hey, we have to be patient about these things. Let's do it. All right, she's out. So this is the piece. You can see it's pretty important to preserve the shape of it keep those outside bits except for of course that edge that has frayed because now we can use this as a template to cut a new piece of fabric to replace this one if you didn't have this or if it was ripped beyond repair so like you just couldn't use it as a template you would have to go into your garment or your bag or whatever it is for where that piece sits and measure it up really well i would add a bit of extra seam allowance around the edges because you just never know when you're going to need that little bit extra just in case you make a mistake gives you a bit of a buffer um but yeah measure it up and then cut out a piece to replace it Okay, so after pulling that piece out, this is what the inside now looks like because that's where that uh, rectangle piece of fabric went. I'm just going to cut out another one from this fabric that I have and then pop it back in there. You should have a little pile of threads. You wanna make sure that you pull all of those out from the bag because you don't want them floating around. And later when you're using a sewing machine, things could get caught. Um, if you've got loose threads and things, they could get caught in the machine and it just makes it a bit more fussy to deal with. So uh, another thing to note is the type of thread. So I can tell that this thread is quite thick. Come on, focus for me, there you go. It's quite thick. I can tell that it's thicker than your average sewing thread that you would sort of use for a garment. So instead of going out to buy a new thread, um, I'm sort of a fan of, you know, making use of what you already have because I know that if I go out and buy a new roll of this specific thread, I'm literally only going to use it for two rounds of going around this piece. Oh, my camera's just not being nice today. Come on, bud. Anyway, which, you know, at max is like, oh, I don't know, maximum two meters worth of thread. Whereas most rolls that you can buy are about 50 to 100, if not more. So what I'm gonna do instead of buying new thread is going to, is I am going to, if I can keep talking today, um, is, is to double up my thread. So instead of using just one strand of normal thread, I'm going to put two together you can put both threads through the needle of the sewing machine together. Um, just make sure they're coming off the coil nicely so they don't get caught on anything. And then you're essentially just sewing with two threads instead of one, giving the, it that extra little bit of strength. Cool, cool. This is what I meant with the threads. So I've just got two going up and over and then the two we basically just join here. Very blurry, there you go. They two, they come together and then they run through the entire machine together. And then you just thread both of them through the needle. Okay, it's also worth noting what sort of fabric that you're replacing. So because this was quite a durable bag, like it's the kind that you would take to the snow or out on like, I don't know, hiking, active, of. Um, I can tell this is probably like a nylon, which is a synthetic fiber. It's very strong, usually waterproof. So I want to, the fabric that I'm going to replace it with, I want it to be pretty similar. It would be pretty useless if I replaced it with a, for example, a really thin silk crepe because it's obviously not going to meet the performance that I need for this bag. Um, so I was pretty lucky. I actually found these wild country pants which are 100% nylon. They're like 
they're really big. <laughs> um, they're, they're also men's pants, which is another reason why they're really big. But I saw them at the Salvos. They're tagged $11, but they were on the sale rack for $2. And so I saw them and I knew that I could either make use of all of these little um, trims that come on the pants, which is a really cool upcycling idea, or I actually already had the douche bag and knew that I had to mend it. So I saw these pants and I knew that they would be suitable fabric for me to mend with. And being long pants, there's a lot of fabric to work with. So I'm just going to use like this little bit on the bottom. And because it's this nylon fabric, which is highly durable, um, probably it's, it might be bleh, bleh, bleh. It might even be like a ripstop fabric, which would be great because of course I want the bag to be as durable as possible. This is the tiny little piece of fabric I need to replace. And as you can see, there is more than enough fabric on the bottom of these pants to replace it with. In fact, I'm kind of tempted to even do two layers, but I know that that will be a little bit more fiddly to put back into the bag. <sighs> I don't know, should I do two or should I do one? Should I do two? Should I do one? Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna do two. I'm gonna do two and I'm gonna do two because I'm gonna sew around the outside, overlock it, and so it will be, it shouldn't be any more difficult than just doing the one. Anyway, that's my life story. I will show you when I've cut it out. What I'm gonna do now is get this piece. I'm glad I did two layers now because it feels quite thin. I'm actually just going to sew all the way around the border and basically that's just gonna sew the two pieces together and I'm going to overlock or serge around the outside and that's going to prevent the same thing from happening because basically this frame and that hole that like it tore away from the rest of the bag is because this edge, these edges, they weren't overlocked. And this type of fabric, as you can see, frays really easily. So I imagine the same thing could happen with these. And so to stop that from happening, yeah, you can actually already see it. So see there how it's going to start fraying. The exact same thing will happen unless I overlock it. So I'm gonna do that now and I'll be back. Ideally, of course, I would match all of my threads to my fabric. This is actually more of a bluey gray and the rest of the bag is black. So I'm just gonna use blacks and grays. The gray part is only for around this outside anyway, so you won't be able to see it. So these three are for the overlocker and I'll just use that for the straight stitch. Like I said, it's always a good idea to just use what you have. Oh, that looks kind of blue. Oh well, um, <laughs> use what you have instead of buying something new. putting off this bit because I know that it's going to be the trickiest bit. <laughs> Fitting this sucker back into the bag. Hmm. I'm gonna have a look. I think it might actually be easier to hand sew it in. And you know that I'm getting desperate if I say that we should hand sew it because hand sewing is just so much harder than using a machine. But it's just because of the bulky nature of a bag. Obviously, it's very three-dimensional, like a box shape, if you can imagine that. And having to sew into the corners of a box can be real tricky. So let's see how we go. So if you couldn't tell, there was actually a little bit of shaping in this. Uh, I don't know if you can tell from that. But one end, it's actually not a rectangle. It's a trapezium or a quadrilateral. So those, this bottom edge is actually longer than this top edge. So that means that this bag, I think it's pretty obvious when you actually look at the bag, um, the bottom edge is longer than this top edge. 
So we just gotta make sure that we align the right bits. And all right. Oh boy. Oh boy. Ooh, I think I've sort of figured something out. Is basically I need to try and flip the bag out the right, the other way, like this. <laughs> so I'm flipping it out on itself. Ooh, this will be way easier. Okay. Because, if you remember before, this is the edge that we are sewing around. So, the more access I have to this edge, the better I can sew. Ooh, this is going to be heaps easier. All right, we got this, we got this. Okay, done. This looks pretty good. Let me show you. So you can see that piece is sitting nicely. Look, it's going to be a real struggle. Like this bit I can tell is really thick. I think it's because it's going through the outer layer of the bag, which is a really heavy duty material. Uh, so we will see how we go. Just got to try. Okay, wow, that was a massive struggle. <laughs> Basically, as you could see from the footage, I just could not get into the corners. So that was because usually when people sew bags, there's like a different type of machine. So this was like as close to the corner I could get right there. Um, and of course there's a hole, which I'm and on every single corner is the same. Like I just couldn't get into the corner because of the nature of a sewing machine. So I'm going to hand sew those bits. It's gonna be all good. I'm going to flip the bag the right way out and just double check that everything that I've sewn is actually sitting in the right place because the worst thing would be if you flip it out the right way and then discover that you've sewn something wrong and then all of your efforts were wasted. Looking pretty good, pretty good. Try to show you. <laughs> All right, so top end. Doo -doo -doo. And the only bits which you can see have not been finished are these corners, if you can see my thumb there. And from the inside, there we go. This is the patch that we've just sewn, and it looks pretty neat. It actually matches the inside pretty well. Look, not gonna lie, when I was forcing this thing through the machine, I was like, this was not worth it. This, <laughs> I don't know how long this has taken me. I don't know what the time is. But now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know what? This is not that bad. All right, on to hand sewing. <laughs> Okay, that's done. I have done the corners a little bit shoddily, but they will do the job. And now the last thing to do is put this tape back on. So I'm also not looking forward to this part. <laughs> I think it's gonna be really hard. Um, look, I'm tempted to hand sew it, but Hand sewing is also really tricky. Now nah, I'm going to pin it down. I'm going to pin it in place and then I am going to machine sew it. And it's going to be great.
holy moly guys out of all the projects i have done for this channel this one nearly broke me <laughs> and maybe it's because the expectation was that it would be simple and the concept was very straightforward there were two things to unpick two things to sew back but the sewing back part was really freaking hard and it's definitely not perfect look i'll show you this is far from good like you can see that some of the bits haven't been covered properly looks kind of messy it's breaking my heart a bit but sometimes when you're mending things and this is the best you can sort of achieve with the materials that you have you just gotta let it go we're just gonna flip it out the right way and then before we inflict any more judgment on ourselves or look i'll speak for myself before i inflict any more judgment on myself look that looks pretty good i'll trim off loose threads like that get rid of that look i really can't complain three hundred dollars a three hundred dollar bag is really not that much but the idea is that we can mend things so much better than we think that we can and by mending things, we're stopping, you know, shit from going to landfill and we're stopping people from buying so much. And I think that's the point, right? Is that half the time we think we have to buy more. We think that we're only going to be happy if we have brand new stuff. And that's just not the case. We now have a really nice functional outdoor type bag. That from this angle, how did I get in there? From this angle, that seam looks pretty freaking good. So, success! Hopefully this video was entertaining for you. As I said, it was really quite a journey. I thought it was going to be easier, um, but I'm really glad that I did it. I'm really satisfied with the result and I can't wait to use this bag. It is going to be very useful for all of my little adventures coming up. Can't wait to show you what I have planned because I recently made a bit of a uh, large purchase that um, has to do with travel and adventure and I can't wait to share more of that stuff. In the meantime, if you're interested, I'm all about sustainable fashion, sustainable living, how to try and slow down and be intentional with our lifestyles. If you're interested in any of those things, caring for your garments, thrift shopping, how to fix rips in jeans, head over to my channel and if this video is entertaining, give it a thumbs up because it will let me know that there are people watching and that they're enjoying this content that I really enjoy making. I hope that you enjoyed it and thank you for watching. See you next time.